Good day, our dear students. Welcome to the TV Keson Bukidun. My young Bunta Kenyon Tanan. This is Teacher Yun, your teacher broadcaster in today's session for Grade 8 Mathematics. I hope that you are ready to listen and learn our discussion. At the end of the lesson, you will be expected to first identify direct and indirect proof. Second, the right direct and indirect proofs. And the third, apply direct and indirect reasoning in geometry. This morning, we are going to discuss two kinds of reasoning. And you heard that one already, namely direct and indirect reasoning. Indirect reasoning or proof by contradiction is a type of formal proof used when the conclusion from a hypothesis is shown false and then a contradiction is reached from the given to those statements. This time, we are going to write the first sentence only of an indirect proof of its conditional shown. Example, if AB equals BC, then triangle ABC is not fiscally. So, where is now our conclusion? Yes, exactly. The triangle ABC is not fiscally. Therefore, we are going to assume temporarily that triangle ABC Example number 2. If n squared is greater than 6n, then n is not equal to 4. So the conclusion is n should not be equal to 4. Therefore, we are going to assume again temporarily that n equals Example number 3. If measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 2, then line segment XY is parallel to line segment CD. So the conclusion is line segment XY is parallel to line segment CD. The same method we are going to assume temporarily that line segment XY is not parallel to line segment CD. So let's go now to direct reasoning. Direct reasoning is a type of formal proof used in which the sequence of statements are either given or deductions from previous statements. And most last statement is the conclusion to the problem. Example, we say the integer n is even if there is an integer a such that n equals to a. We say n is odd if there is k such that n equals 2k plus 1. To understand this example, let's represent k in any integer. If k equals 4, then we're going to substitute k to 4. So that is 2 times 4 is equal to k. If k equals 5, then 2 times 5 equal to 10. And if k equals negative 3, then 2 times negative 3 is equal to negative 6. But how about the formula of a teacher where n is odd and n equals 2k plus 1? If k equals 1, then 2 times 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. If k equals 4, then 2 times 4 plus 1 equals 9. Then k equals negative 3. Then 2 times negative 3 plus 1. That is equal to negative 1. So this time, we are going to identify if it's either direct and indirect reasoning. And let's finish the proof. Number 1. If n is an integer and n squared is odd, then n is odd. First, we are shown that the opposite of n is odd. So this is indirect reasoning. So we are shown that the opposite of n is odd. Therefore, n is even. If n is even, then n equals 2k, where k is in a teacher, just like our example a while ago. Right? Now, square n and see what happens. 
this becomes n squared plus 2k raised to 2 that is equal to 4k squared. This means that n squared is a multiple of 4. No odd number and we divide it evenly by an even number. It's like this. So this contradicts our assumption that n is even. Therefore, n must be at its n squared. So if two integers have opposite parity, then their sum is at. So suppose m and n are two integers with opposite parity. So this is, yes, direct reasoning. So suppose m and n are two integers with opposite parity. So the opposite parity refer to add an event. We need to show now that m plus n is add. That's m plus 2a and n plus 2 minus 1 for any integer a. Therefore, m plus n plus 2a plus 2 minus 1 equal to 2 times a plus b plus Whatever the value of a plus b, either an or even, positive or negative integer, when it comes to this formula, then that sum is always add. So we can see that the conclusion is proven of those previous statements, and that is direct reason. Number 3. If n is even, so n squared is even. So assume that n is an even, so this is direct reasoning. So assume that n is an even, and because n is even, so n equals 2k. For any integer k, example. So now, if we are going to square this 2, then this becomes n squared equals 2 times 2 k squared. And if we let j equals 2 k squared, then n squared equals 2j. So, n is even. It's because any integer that will substitute for j, the result is always even. Example number 4. If x equals 2, then 3x minus 5 is not equal to 10. If x equals 2, then 3x minus 5 is equal to 10. So this is a direct result. If x equals 2, then 3x minus 5 equals 10. So we take these statements as true and solve for x. 3x minus 5 equals 10. So by addition property, that becomes 3x equals 15. By division property, that becomes x equals 5. So this contradicts the given statement that x equals 2. Hence, our assumption is incorrect and 3x minus 5 what is. If triangle ABC is isotelous, then the measure of the base angles cannot be 90 degrees. The measure of the base angles are 90 degrees. Is it what kind of reasoning? Yes, in direct. The measure of the base angles are 90 degrees. If the angles are 90 degrees, then they add up to 184 degrees. But this contradicts the triangle sum theorem that says the three angle measures of all triangles add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, the base angles cannot be 92 degrees. As we see here, we have a two triangle, namely CAB and triangle RES. And we have also the given that AC equals RP, AB equals RS, but angle A is not equal to angle R. So we're going to prove that BC is congruent. So we're going to assume temporarily that BC equals is T. So this is what kind of reasoning? Yes, in dynamic reasoning. So we're going to assume temporarily that BC equals is T. Then triangle ABC is congruent to triangle RST by SSS or side 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 postulate. And angle A is 
from drawing to anchor arc since corresponding parts of the drawing triangles are congruent. But this contradicts the given information that angle A is the drawing angle arc. Therefore, the temporary assumption that BC equals ST must be false. It follows that BC is as well Second example, this figure, we have triangle A, B, C. Given that line segment A, B is growing to line segment B, we are going to prove that angle B is growing to Given that A, B plus C, C, what kind of return is this? Yes, it is direct. Given that A, B plus C, C, then we can construct of an angle by sector A to line BC forming segment AD. So from that, we have congruent angles. Angle BED is congruent to angle CED, which are formed by definition of an angle by sector. Since AD is congruent to AD by reflexive property of equality, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD by SAS postulate. Hence, angle B is congruent to angle C by corresponding parts of corresponding triangles are congruent. So this is third year saying that if you have a problem, then make a solution. If you don't have a problem, then find another person's problem to be their solution. Always, join the growth!